regions and this this resource is resource handling is mostly done there. And of course, uh, if you remember the slide from Peter about the interrupt routing, all this information is stored in this DSDT table. Uh, and especially this IRQ routing is stored in the PRT methods I will show in uh, in next uh, next lecture more when I will be speaking about porting this uh, uh, porting Corbu to new uh, motherboard. So I will talk more about it then. <coughs> okay, because the ACPI is somehow trying to be generic for the operating system. So for example, there are stored values which is operate which operating system has to write to some certain registers inside. So we will see. If you if you take this table and uh, disassemble it back to human readable form, it's around ten thousand lines, so it's quite huge. Uh, here are some examples. Uh, so on the left, I have just taken very easy and, sim and very generic stuff like this real-time clock. I think uh, you were also mentioning it. So this real-time clock are on port 1771. So these are defined resources. So if operating system asks device RTC0, what are your system resources? So this method CRS gets executed and this is returned to operating system. So it starts at address 70 and it's two, uh, two ports in total. And IRQ, IRQ8 is used. So similar is on the other side, it's for the PS2 keyboard. Um, I think there is some method which is called STI. Uh, and it's just status if the uh, keyboard is there or not. And you can see it's, uh, let's say, Turing complete language. So you have the ifs you, in the new specification, you can, or the new revision, you can add whiles, and you can program whatever you want there. So here's a little example. So you can shift left and do the conditions and return values. It's just like programming in C but it's this bytecode which is stored inside uh, your computer. <coughs> so uh, I did a little of just a listing of devices which are there. Most of the stuff is the legacy stuff. Uh, then uh, what is important, there must be uh, the uh, PCI root bridge described, plus its resources which are decoded, other PCI bridges uh, or the, let's say, PCI devices, PCI Express devices, SATAs, and everything. So these are just headers for the devices, and each device has a long stuff, a lot of routines around, which can set up the device, put it to some certain power states, and so on. This all is because uh, it's um, unnecessary to hide uh, a disk uh, complexity away from the operating system to make it so generic. Um, well, uh, this uh, there is another table, which is not the DSDT table, <coughs> but it's also important. This table uh, describes uh, where are the a APICs, uh, what addresses are for the APICs, what what are the IDs of the interrupt controllers inside CPUs. And uh, maybe you remember the, the picture of the legacy stuff There's from IRQ 0 to 16. There are some exceptions uh, which must be handled. Uh, I'm not sure why this information is not in the bytecode, why is it separatable. It's like the design decisions sometimes were quite strange. So. So this table mostly describes uh, what are the hardware addresses of these devices in the systems and how this routing here, the lines, how, the, how, is it, how it looks like. Yeah? So maybe, uh, maybe you can see that <coughs> the legacy interrupt controller is connected to pin zero 
and uh, that the timer is connected to pin two and it is connected to uh, yeah to, to pin zero. So you need to handle this situation that this place looks strange. Maybe uh, you uh, you have seen that that the Linux kernel wrote you MP BIOS bug IRQ0 is not something. So this is the reason because this table didn't describe this situation, how is it wired uh, correctly. So in this table it, it should be it should be um, expressed how the how the particular platform handled this situation. Yeah, so <coughs> because uh, this was enough with the software, maybe a little more words about the hardware. Uh, so uh, the ACPI defines some fixed function registers, which has a uh, fixed layout. Uh, usually uh, it's kind of double register, one it's with the enable bits and another register is with the status bits. <coughs> so, and of course, there must be a register which uh, handles the sleep states of the computer. If the computer goes to suspend to RAM or uh, to S5, so it shut down completely. All this uh, stuff is defined in the specification. So there is some other hardware register which is located in uh, Southbridge, which handles the C states of the CPUs. It's called P, uh, C and T. And uh, this uh, this is used to put the CPU to the C2 and C3 states. Yeah, and the last block, I would say very general, is the general purpose event block. It's for the waking up event. So, for example, if you are the hardware designer, there must be some switch for the lid of the notebook. And this lid is connected to some line. And uh, the pin to inside the south bridge is then route it and it can be seen what is the status of this line in this register and you can use this information to wake up the computer from sleep for example. So uh, if you want to know more about the hardware stuff, uh, it's uh, you can open any public data sheet. Uh, you can use even Intel documentation, AMD, so whatever. Uh, Usually, these all registers, even if the FADT table requires them on, let's say, uh, different places, usually they are stored in one block. So, for example, in FADT table, here you have the status registers, then the timer, it's, uh, the base address was 800, so this is 804 was something. Yeah, you, maybe you remember it from the previous slide. So. Here is the uh, C state control, so C2, C3 state is the level 2 and level 3. What is quite interesting is that the CPU is uh, then uh, put to sleep and you don't write to these registers, you will read them. So it's quite, you must be very careful if you are doing some register dump of this memory area, because if you do that, you will do the read. And if you do the reads, these <laughs> registers will be read, in fact, and the CPU will be put to unexpected sleep, for example, or the machine can freeze while reading some region. So be careful uh, when doing some <laughs> experiments like, like this, because I don't know why they design it this way, that reading will cause something and not writing. Um, so... Uh, I have chosen some uh, control register. Uh, here is what, uh, what's, in, what's important. If you, for example, write your own program to switch off the computer, all you need is to uh, is to write to the sleep type register. Uh, I think uh, if you want to suspend it to disk or to even lower state, you just need to write this magic value there. Uh, this is in Linux, it is done that uh, 
this bit or the meaning of the bit is stored in the DSDT table, then the operating system when it's, when it's, uh, when it's running off the computer will just take the I.O. part from another table, this information from the DSDT table and then do the, uh, do the power off for the system. Again, this is not done in the bytecode for some reason. It's quite tangled together. The design is really unclear why is it this way. Uh, here is more information about the uh, CPU power states. Uh, I wasn't just sure if the people has the knowledge. So just very shortly, this is the P states stuff. So the CPU frame driver is some information from ACPI uh, to put the processor to different voltage and different frequency. Uh, it's similar for AMD and Intel. And uh, as I already uh, told, this is stored in SSDT table. It's, it's, a, it's some methods as you, as you have seen for the uh, uh, for, uh, as it was there uh, for the example of the RTC clocks. So, yeah, so if you want to learn more uh, about uh, <coughs> this kind of stuff, we can now use some utilities and to actually look uh, to these tables uh, now. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't have any uh, clock device, so what's the time, please? It's 20 minutes. Left. Left yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, maybe it can be. Can you make it white on black? Uh, easily, maybe. No, no, no. White what? So if you install some utilities, um, I think it's in ASP utils package, so you will get the ASP dump. So let's run it. So it will generate uh, just the memory dump of the table. So it will go through the tables as we did in the beginning of the lecture. Here are all tables and all information. And because we are humans, we want some more human readable uh, there is uh, there is another uh, utility which will put it to separate files. So now we have produced some date files which are just the binary files, and because we want to read it, we can use the i uh, iacl from Intel to disassemble back. So, for example, the DSDT. So now we have produced the DSDT file dot DSL, and here is the DSDT table, the bytecode put, which is put back. There are some funny parts, like uh, maybe maybe it's there. I'm not sure if. Yeah. So depending on operating system, uh, the, the ACPI bytecode is doing different things to the hardware. So it happens. Yeah, so uh, with, this e, uh, with this utility, <coughs> which is described on the slides, you can have a look on all the tables, then take the specification and have a look. So now a bit more information about the core boot and ACPI. So, uh, as uh, the specification is wanting some tables that must 
must be present in the system, so we need also to provide such tables. Uh, what we have done is that we, uh, we have taken some minimalistic DSDT table, which is mostly empty just with the, uh, just with the uh, interrupt routing. So we have to provide all these tables which, which are there. Uh, maybe at the end, if there will be more time, we can go through it a bit. Yeah, so uh, just to show you, So each motherboard in core boot has to have the ACPI. So so yeah, just uh, yeah. So I'm not sure if. You can see it, I will fix it in my next lesson. So we just construct the tables. We have some callbacks for it. So this is the this is the main routine which is constructing all the crowd of the tables, putting them into memory. Uh, the uh, in this part of the code we are filling up the addresses of the APIX and in interrupt uh, uh, the addresses of the interrupt controllers and so on, so everything has to be uh, filled filled in. Uh, the DS, DSDT uh, for the main board is quite uh, it's quite easy, I think. Because I, I cannot see the last few pixels here, so it's kind of difficult. So this is what's, what's done in, uh, in, the core uh, in the core boot. Uh, <coughs> it's not so complicated, just uh, to show you, here are the interrupt, interrupt routing description for the operating system. And uh, I think Windows needs to have mouse. Uh, describe uh, and PS keyboard, so we have to add this and uh, mouse and floppy, it, I think, and that's it. So we, we try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, I think only place which is really uh, which is really uh, for this board is to blink with the lab if the system goes to the. Uh, suspend to RAM, so we will write to some register inside uh, Southbridge uh, to blink to blink the lab. It's done with the store line, and, and in wake up we stop the blinking. So here you can a bit see how the pro how the hardware is programmed. Uh, so that's it. Fifteen minutes until end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, on this slide is a bit of information about the, uh, the generator for the bytecode uh, for the uh, CPU P states. Uh, you need to generate this for different CPUs, so you, you cannot uh, store it in your flash, because if someone changes the CPU, you would need <coughs> to recompile the core boot with some different settings, which is quite unpractical. So we are filling those PSS objects on the fly. So previously it was done like that some, somebody binary patched the bytecode just change, changing the values. Uh, so we removed that and we programmed some a little framework which is used for generating the SP, ACPI packages and methods and so on. So now the code is much much, much cleaner, so it's more easy to read it, write it, and develop the runtime runtime code which is needed. So uh, now <laughs> a bit about suspend and resume. 
So, what's actually a computer doing if it goes to suspend? So, if you cho choose the suspend or just write the man to this special file, so Linux will execute in all drivers uh, the suspend method. Uh, the ACPI core drivers will then run uh, standard defined methods from the DSDT. Uh, then the caches get splashed, these caches, and then some value which is in underscore S3 uh, is written to PM1 register and the computer will enter the sleep. So from the BIOS or core boot point of view, uh, nothing more has to be done. You can use system management mode to trap this event. So you can, you can do something else just before the computer goes to sleep. So not the operating system is the last which can do the write because the system management mode can catch the write to the register and do whatever, whatever it wants. So from the hardware side, um, it's a bit more complicated. So the operating system writes to the sleep type register, then some message is generated to CPU. Uh, it's a bit similar when the frequency and voltage is changed. 